In our last video, I explained to you the basic idea of bank reconciliations, but I don't think that's very useful until you've actually tried to do one. So this video, and probably the next, I think this will be a two-parter, we're going to work through a pretty big bank reconciliation problem from top to bottom. Um, I've linked uh, the Word document of the problem uh, beneath uh, this video, so hopefully you're able to uh, click the link. If you're not, uh, leave a comment and I'll, I'll make sure it works. Uh, so anyway, here's the bank rec problem. This is the typical way I ask bank rec problems in my classes, but again, your instructor may do it in a different way. They may lay it out in a different way, but I, I think this is pretty realistic. Uh, typical uh, bank rec questions will show the company's cash account, either in a T account or some sort of GL, general ledger form. And then it'll have on the bottom half or the, or the top half, one half will be a bank statement. And so here we've got a bank statement and a little bit of details. And then the question asks, prepare a bank reconciliation and any required journal entries. Okay, well, let's kind of work through this top to bottom. So, uh, you're the bookkeeper for Ned's Optometry. Ned's Cash T account for the month 2012, March 2012 is shown below. And you can see there's a bunch of March transactions and 5269 debit balance in cash. Okay, so we have $5,269 as our ending balance of cash. Uh, now, continuing on down the page. Um, Opening balance, uh, is it, oh, uh, sorry, Ned's bank statement follows, bank statement for the month of March. Uh, and reading through here, there's just some deposits and some withdrawals, some checks going in and out, money going in and out of the bank statement. And at the bottom, they say amounts deducted, amounts added. Your question might say debits and credits. I actually, I, I made up this question myself and I based it on a real bank statement and that's what they say now. Uh, but a lot of times in accounting questions, they'll, they'll refer to amounts deducted and added as debits and credits. My advice to you is, when you're doing a bank reconciliation question, ignore the words debits and credits. Banks treat debits and credits exactly opposite of how accountants would treat debits and credits. So it's best just to ignore those silly bankers. Um, but anyway, on the right hand side, I see a running total of my bank balance and I see 5875 in cash. And I think to myself, hmm, I'm going to zoom out a bit. And I know this will be small on your screen, but you can see it up there at the top. The bottom line of my uh, cash T account was 5269. The bank says I have $5,875 in cash. We disagree, right? My cash T account disagrees with the bank statement. As I said in the last video, that's fine for them to disagree. They don't have to match. What's a problem is if we as the accountants can't explain it. We need to be able to understand why the bank balance on the bank statement, this independent uh, source of information, is not matching our own internal document. As soon as I can explain it, I'll be happy. And how do we explain it? We prepare a new document called the bank reconciliation. So let's go ahead and get started on our bank reconciliation. The way we deal with bank reconciliations is like so. We're going to say, as I get my pen tool out, uh, the name of the company. And this company was called Ned's Optometry. Okay, so Ned's Optometry. We've got to title this thing. So just like a, a typical... Um, financial statement title. It's going to be a three-liner. We'll say what we're doing here. Bank reconciliation. And typically when I've seen these dated, they're not dated as that or for the month ended. And I wouldn't be too worried unless your instructor tells you. But you just put a date on it. And so the date's going to be the end of the month here. Um, March 31st. And I think it was 2012. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so the way a bank rec works is it kind of a little bit like a balance sheet works. We're going to do a left side where we're going to list out, um, well, one side of it, and the right side will be another side. Uh, so on the left side, we're going to say, here's what the bank thinks my cash is, and here's why the bank's wrong. So we're going to say, balance per bank. And what that means is balance according to the bank. Maybe balance per bank statement or ending balance per bank statement. So it's March 31st. 
I want to know what's the balance according to my bank. So let's look at this and we'll say, oh, according to my bank, again, I know I'm zoomed out a little bit. Uh, I record these all in 720p, high definition. So if it's too small or it's not, it's a bit foggy or fuzzy in, in the default setting, uh, right in the bottom corner of the video, you can turn up the resolution and maybe you'll see better. I, I think this will be fine on the normal setting, but if it's not, just turn up the resolution and you should see it clearly. Anyway, the ending balance according to the uh, bank statement was 5875 and that's the one we're interested in. Not the beginning balance, not any of these totals. We're interested in the ending balance according to the bank statement. So again, I, I, I choose the words balance per bank. That just means according to. And the balance according to the bank was... 5875. Now I'm going to draw a little dotted line down the middle. It's supposed to be down the middle. I can see I'm a little off to the right. Uh, on the right hand side, we're going to look at our own books. So we'll say balance per books. And on the right hand side, we're going to say here's what we thought of the cash and here's why we're off. So the balance according to our books, and when I say balance per books, I mean our own records. The balance according to our own records is 52.69. So our balance according to our records is 52.69. Let me just put that up here. We'll worry about formatting later. Okay, so I hope I'm starting to paint the picture. On the left hand side of the bank rack, we're going to say, here's the balance according to the bank. We looked at the bank statement. The bank thinks we have 58.75 in cash. Then we're going to say, here's why the bank's wrong. And we're going to list all the things the bank missed or messed up. On the right hand side, we're going to say, here's what we think our cash is, 5269. And we're going to say, here's why we're wrong. So for the duration of this video, I'm going to go through all the reasons the bank is wrong. And the bank's really going to be wrong for two, re well, three reasons. One, outstanding checks, which I discussed last video. Two, outstanding deposits or deposits in transit and three if the bank made a mistake on an account uh, and that's something we'll have to look at as well uh, so let's deal with one and two the bank rarely makes mistakes it's more often the accountant of the company that makes a mistake but let's think about one and two outstanding checks we said were checks that we've recorded that the bank has missed now, for my American friends, one of the wacky uh, Canadian things is I spell checks C-H-E-Q-U-E-S. Of course, you'll spell checks C-H-E-C-K-S. Um, we're looking for, though, checks that I've recorded that the bank has not. So let's go back to our um, question. I went the wrong way there. Going back to our question. We go down our list of checks, and there they all are in order, of course, and they should be sequentially ordered. There shouldn't be anything missing there. Looks good. I'm going to look for any checks that I've recorded that the bank has missed. So let's start with check 62. 832 bucks, and I see it right away on the bank statement. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try something a little tricky. I'm going to give a red check mark on every one to make sure they're matching. I'm also going to zoom out a bit here, and so this might be a good time to have the question handy because it might be hard to see. I don't know. So check 832, check. <laughs> My check mark was way too big. Uh, check 832, check. 1254, and I see a 1254 down there, and that's yes. Check 63, a little bit of a smaller check mark, a little bit of a smaller check mark there too. Check 64, now there's an asterisk, and it says 839. And I see check 64 down here, two asterisks, it says 983. There's obviously something going on there. Let's go down to the asterisks. And actually there it is, the two asterisk one. It says check 64, a payment on account was incorrectly recorded as 839 on Ned's books. The correct amount of the check was recorded by the bank, 983. So what they're saying here is there was a mistake. Uh, it wasn't 839, it was in fact 983. So when we're looking at this part of the bank rack, I wouldn't call this an outstanding check. It's certainly an issue we're going to have to deal with, but I wouldn't call it an outstanding check because the bank is very much aware of check 64 and they got it right. We're looking for checks that the bank doesn't know about yet. So I'm just going to put a little red star beside that and kind of remind myself i got to circle back to that a little later, but it's not an outstanding check. 
Uh, 270, let's see, so check 65 for 270. Yes, there's a 270 there and there. Uh, the next check for 1366. Yep, there it is and there it is. The next check for 425. There it is and there it is. Uh, the next check for 540. Um, ooh, okay, so I don't see any checks. I don't see any amounts deducted for 540. Looking for check number 68. No check number 68 anywhere here. So this check 540 is absolutely an outstanding check. It's a check I wrote on March 13th. But whoever I gave it to didn't deposit it to their bank yet, and the bank doesn't know about it yet. So this is an outstanding check. Let's continue reading on, though. Uh, check 88 matches. Check 1300 matches. Uh, check 1600. Looks like it's going to match as well. And check 72 for 385. Uh, I don't see any 385s there, so I'm going to circle that. Okay, so it looks from my list like I have two outstanding checks. I have that one weird check, but it was my mistake, not the bank's mistake. So I'm not going to put it on the bank's side of this bank rack. But let's do my side of the bank rack. Outstanding checks, I've got two. I've got check number 68 for 540 and check number 72 for 385. So let's do it. Uh, Check number 68 for 540, and oh, I always go the wrong way there. Uh, check number 72 for 385. Check, oh, my writing, number 72 for 385 bucks. So our total outstanding checks 540 plus 385. That looks like 925 to me. Let's continue on and we'll do our outstanding deposits next. Uh, so on this side, we're going to look for any deposits that are missing. So 5,500, it's important that the opening balances match. If they don't match, we have extra work to do that's beyond the scope of I think introductory accounting. If your opening balances don't match, though, you're, you're doing a more challenging question than I want to present today. Uh, 1450 matches, 2555 matches, 1832 matches, uh, 1981, and I saw that that matched down there, uh, 850 on March 31st, I don't see any 850s, I see that 1450, that's something else though, that's on the bank, but not on our books, that's fine, the 850 though, looks to me like an outstanding deposit or a deposit in transit. So let's put that in. I'll call it deposits, or it's actually only one, so deposit in transit. If you had more than one, you could call it deposits in transit. And it was the one from the 31st uh, for 850 bucks. So I'm just going to note that March 31st. and it's for 850 bucks. Now I write that over in the total side because I don't have a list of them, I only have the one. All right, so I'm done with the bank side. I've said, here's what the bank thought cash was and here's why they were wrong. Remember that weird error, that 839 and 938 or whatever the numbers were? That's my mistake. I'm gonna deal with that on the next part of the bank rack. Here I gotta deal with the bank side. So I gotta say, okay, the bank thought my cash was 5875, but they missed two checks for 925. When they find out about those checks, it's a minus to my cash. So outstanding checks, I put in brackets. Uh, the deposit, when they find out about it, it's going to add to my cash. So let's just add it all up. 58.75 minus 9.25 plus 8.50 equals, I hope I'm right here, $5,800. We're going to call that our reconciling balance. In our next video, we're going to move over to the other side of the books. That's all for this part.